We're at the 2018 CROI. We're here with Amita Gupta, who's with Johns Hopkins University. And we really appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. And uh, I'm going to let you, uh, this, the, your late breaker session, I'm going to let you set it up. You just completed a press conference. Mm -hmm. So we snagged you, and hopefully you would give us a, a sense of what the, the work is that you just completed. Sure. Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, TB is a really important global infectious disease. It's now actually the number one killer um, mm -hmm. globally. And it, um, in particular for HIV-infected people, it's a major cause of morbidity and mortality. And women who are reproductive age um, actually have a peak in their TB um, prevalence. And so our goal of our trial was to actually look at how best to prevent TB in pregnancy. Um, because when a woman is pregnant and she develops TB, it not only impacts her own health, it also impacts mm -hmm. that of her unborn infant and her infant. And so we were really looking to see how we could safely prevent TB and the sequelae. And even though there's been a lot of prevention trials for tuberculosis, um, mm -hmm. including internationally, there's never been one that's included pregnant women. Mm -hmm. So this was the first randomized trial to include pregnant women. And what we did was we had a trial in eight countries that was conducted in the International Maternal Pediatric AIDS Clinical Trials Group. Mm -hmm. And we randomized 956 pregnant women with HIV who were either 14 weeks to 34 weeks pregnant, and they either got immediate INH preventive therapy um, or they were randomized to get it after they delivered at three months postpartum. And we compared the safety and efficacy both for mom, the pregnancy outcomes, as well as the infant outcomes. And what we found was is that there was um, a fair amount of adverse events in terms of um, uh, what we call um, liver enzyme abnormalities, as well as um, uh, uh, other hematologic and sim signs and symptoms, but they were not different by the immediate versus postpartum arm. So they were similar, high in both arms. But what we found that was important, and we would not have found this if we had only done these trials in non-pregnant, was that we actually had um, a difference in the pregnancy outcomes. Hmm. So we had more um, stillbirths and more low birth weight babies in the immediate arm, so the women who got oh, the wow. INH in pregnancy, hmm. compared to those who waited till after they delivered and got it at three months started after delivery. Mm -hmm. And so that was a surprising finding. And part of it is because INH has been around since the 1950s. and. Um, and so we had uh, that. And remember, all these women were on antiretroviral therapy because now everybody gets antiretroviral therapy. And specifically, 85% of them were on an efavirence-based regimen. The other, I think, important finding is that we found that we had um, more deaths than we expected, and they weren't all from the INH. They actually, uh, we had one in each arm, one in the immediate arm, and one in the um, deferred postpartum arm. And then we had one, uh, one in, um, we had two other deaths, but they were not related to INH at all because the women never got it. Mm -hmm. And so four out of the six deaths that we had in the trial were actually due to some kind of liver hepatotoxicity mm -hmm. um, out of six. So that was a surprising finding that was sort of not expected. And so that also brings us to think about the ART regimen that they're on, whether efavirenz is playing a role. Um, could there be a drug interaction there? There could be, and that's a great question. We're actually going to be looking at the drug levels of the two drugs. There is, there is some it data. It doesn't up or down regulate or anything? Well, if you're a slow metabolizer, so if your body um, slowly uh, metabolizes both INH and efavirenz, mm -hmm. there is a, some literature to say there may be increased toxicity. So we're going to be following that up in the trial now. We're looking at the drug levels as well as what we call the genetics of right. metabolism. Mm -hmm for both drugs in this population. Um, we didn't find any difference in terms of among the, the infants that were born. Once they were born alive, there was no difference between the two arms. So, you know, given that we're really trying to scale up INH preventive therapy because TB is such an important disease, the sort of take home message is that if you're on really good ART, mm -hmm. Um, we want to consider IPT still, but there may be a subset of women who may be at higher risk for liver injury, and we need to sort of better understand if there's a drug interaction 
or if there is um, something unique to pregnancy that makes it sort of something that we would push off till after delivery. Mm -hmm. And maybe speci especially for those that are, that are pregnant, a special issue that you're dealing with. Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I had gone into this trial wanting to really show that it could safely be used and we could scale it up yeah. for everybody because You don't it's, always get what you wish for. You don't always get what you wish for. And I think it's a little bit more, we want to also be a little bit careful that, as you said, there may be a drug interaction. Mm -hmm. Um, there may be other reasons in addition just beyond the INH clearly mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is um, important for us to look at, including mm -hmm. the efavirenz as I mentioned. So what are your next steps then? So our next steps, we're going to be, we have actually measured the drug levels and we're starting to analyze those data mm -hmm. so we can make some more informed um, um, uh, understanding of what happened. Um, we're also going to look at um, the, um, the plasma to look at other factors that might be associated, why they had the differential pregnancy outcomes, mm -hmm. such as inflammation or other things that might be differentially impacted by the regimens the women were on. And then beyond this trial data, we want to look at shorter regimens um, with other types of antiretrovirals, so looking at INH rifapentine for one month, yeah. looking at the dalutegvir-based regimens for um, women and see how you know, a safer regimens could be used. Great. Well, it sounds like you're on the right track, and I, I wish you luck and I, because we really need to have answers to these questions. Yeah. It's very good. Well, thank you for t sharing uh, interest and uh, for the opportunity. Thank you, Rita. Okay, yeah. take care.